This recording is a follow-up for Wednesday's class. Recall we had gone through and talked about the issues when buying merchandise for a retailer and then turn around and selling it. And we had got, uh, almost had finished uh, in a demonstration problem. So we were ready for uh, number eight. And we had already talked about for the income statement uh, for these four transactions, we actually sold $5,500 of goods. Uh, the customer returned 710 of them, and we're actually ready for number eight, where the customer's going to turn around and pay us, and they're going to pay early, right, within the 10 days, and get this 2% discount. So let's go look at, uh, we've made these journal entries, and we had posted. So right now, if we look at the accounts receivable, uh, 5,500 minus 710 of returns, we actually would have a balance right now of 4790 So the customer is going to pay on this balance. Only they're going to get 2% off of that amount. So let's look at our journal entry. Basically, we know cash is going to come in. That's an asset, so it's going to go up. And in exchange, we're going to give up that account receivable for the customer. So we know the basic transaction. Cash comes in in exchange for the accounts receivable. So let's look at the cash portion. Well, uh, we had already talked about uh, $4,790 is owed to us. Uh, we're going to give them a 2% discount. So $4,790 minus a $96 discount, we're actually going to receive cash of $4,694. So our deposit, right, the customer is going to pay us this amount, and we will deposit that in the bank. So let's put the 4694 That's the amount we actually collect in cash. Now let's look at the receivable. When this is all said and done, the balance in accounts receivable should be zero. So to get that there, right, we need to subtract 4790 out of accounts receivable supposed to be an upside down arrow. So this needs to be credited to reduce it 4790 Well, my debit doesn't equal my credit, or I'll buy the discount of $96. So we need another, another debit. Well, what's that going to go to? Well, this really is a $96 adjustment on our sales price. So we're going to create an account called Sales Discount. And it's a contra revenue that actually has the impact of reducing sales revenue. Okay, so let's go post them so we can see what this looks like. So in number eight, we'll have uh, post the debit here, 4,694. We'll post our credit, 4,790 here. And then we have another debit to this sales discount, it was a debit of $96. So we have a debit and a debit, $96 debit, $46.94. If I add those two debits together, I'll get $47.90, and that's the dollar amount of my credit. Okay, these two accounts, sales returns and allowances and sales discounts, are contra revenues. They're negative revenue accounts. So let's go from... Um, the ledger, and let's write out our financial statements. So if I take my debits minus my credits, I will end up with a balance in my checking account, 6844 Let's do the same thing with my merchandise inventory. Start with our beginning balance, add all the debits, subtract the credits, and I will get an ending balance of 8490 We have zero in accounts receivable. Zero in accounts payable, nothing here. Uh, nothing happened to common stock and retained earnings yet. Uh, cost of goods sold, I need to solve for a balance. 3000 minus 400 is an ending balance of $2,600 debit. Okay, so let's take these and let's scroll right out uh, or look at the financial statements. So recall, if I want to write out uh, the income statement, I'm actually going to start here with 
sales revenue. So here's all my revenue, my two contra revenue accounts, and my expense account. So let's go look at how we're going to see 5,500, 710, and 96 on the income statement. So when it's written out, here's our 5,500. We have our two contra sales accounts, and then we'll arrive at our net sales of 4694 Now, while we're there, I want to point out, before we even started doing the accounting, we had solved for that 4694 as that was really our net sales uh, to begin with. So we already knew that was our real dollar amount of sales. That's what we really ended up selling and at the real sales price. We knew that was the number we needed to get. We made our journal entries. We posted. And now that we're writing it out in the financial statements, we see that we actually got there. Then uh, we'll have cost if it's sold. So I'm just pulling over this $2,600. And I list that out. Now notice what's new for a retailer is we have this uh, profit number called gross profit. That's the profit just off of selling the goods. Then we'll list out all our operating expenses. In this case, there was only the one. Remember the freight out is really, that was a cost of selling the goods. So that was really a selling expense. So there's our $60. And then we arrive at our next income or profit number before taxes. If we assume our income tax rate is 25%, so if I take 2034 times 25%, I'll get an income tax expense of 509. This is new in Chapter 5, this idea of income tax expense. So we'll arrive at income that we're going to pay taxes on. Take that times whatever the tax rate is, in this case 25%. Uh, that gives us our income tax expense. And then finally, the same bottom line, net income. So again, I want to point out we've got different profit numbers. Gross profit, income before income taxes, and then net income. Now, over here to the right is not usually on the formal income statement, but this is something an analyst will usually do. Um, some numbers the analyst will calculate for the income statement. So we'll start with net sales and say it's 100, you know, 460, not 4,694 divided by 4,694 is 100%. So we'll say, you know, this is the pie. So the whole pie is net sales. And then we take each number and divide it by net sales. So cost of goods sold is what percent of net sales? 2600 divided by 4694 is 55%. Gross profit is what percent of net sales? 45%. Braid out is what percent of net sales? 1%. So I just take each of these numbers, divide it by the 4694, and get a percentage. So you can see how these work out as well. 100% minus 55 is 45%. Subtract 1%, this should be 44, but the only reason it's not equaling is because I round it. So it's just rounding difference there. 43% minus 11% is 32. Now, why would an analyst want to do this? Because now I can do a pie chart. So I, you know, chart out all of these things. I can see cost of goods sold. Of course, here I have 55. When I put it in my Excel and I had it doing a, a, a pie chart, it actually bumped it up to 56%. But again, all of these numbers sprayed out, income tax expense and net income is what percent of net sales. Okay, so this is going to be the new format of the income statement. But um, I really want to point out, you know, you really want to take this page Going forward and for the rest of the semester, here's a full-blown multi-step income statement. Your book talked about a single step versus a multi-step. Multi-step is most common and it provides a lot of good information. So it's going to solve for our net sales, gross profit. Here I added in under operating expenses. We know that freight out is a selling expense, so it's going to go there. But I went ahead and listed out other typical expenses in operating the business. Then we'll arrive at income from operations. So here's our profit just from selling the goods. So here's our gross profit from selling the goods. Here's our profit from operations. Right? Here's our normal profit from operations. 
Then we have this other section. So revenue, that's not primary. So for a retailer, it's primary revenue is selling the goods. Any other kind of revenue is going to go down here. That's secondary. So earning interest on a CD, certificate of deposit, is not what we're in business for, but it's still a revenue item. So we list it down here at the bottom as other. Or if we sell, you know, plan assets. Now sales is sales of merchandise or our product. That's what we're in business for. If I sell an office desk, um, that my used office desk, and I'm selling it because I want to buy another one, that's a planned asset. That is not, I'm not in business to sell that kind of my, my used office equipment, uh, unless that's what I was in business for. But let's just say that typical retailer, you know, this office desk is used by accounting. Uh, that's not what I'm in business for, for selling that. Likewise, other expenses, interest expense usually goes down here, or if we sell equipment, that will go down there as well. So we have profit off of selling the goods, profit from our normal operations, profit before taxes. We subtract our income tax expense. If you take 30% of this $29,500, you'll get this number. And then finally, the bottom line, you know, at the very bottom, net income. So now here in Chapter 5, we're seeing the income statement can have a lot more detail, especially for a retailer.